Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, my name is, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ritu, Ritu Javeri, and I am the principal at uh, Maple Bear Preschool, Maple Bear Learning Center, and we are situated in Business Bay. And uh, very shortly, uh, my colleague, Ms. Ahut, will be joining us. She is our principal at Maple Bear Safa Park. So let me first thank you for joining us, taking this time out and uh, being here. Thank you very much. Uh, we, the reason behind having this webinar is to share with uh, everybody out there, especially parents who might be keen, who might be curious on sending the little one uh, back to school, back to nursery, and uh, just to uh, make you feel better, to ease out all the anxieties, all the questions that uh, has come up because of the situation we are in, the current ongoing pandemic. So um, let me begin. I'd like to share my screen. Let me give you a little background about us. So uh, just like most schools in UAE, uh, we as well um, were not operating physically from the month of March. However, with uh, the help of the Dubai the Authority, as well as uh, with the teamwork, everything put together, we are, the Business Bay branch is operational, fully operational. I see one more person joining in. Hi, Christina. Thank you for joining us. So uh, we have been fully operational since 4th of October. And uh, I'm very happy and very proud to say that we are, all the children are coming back. And we are very, very happy to see the faith that parents have shown in us, as well as uh, we're so excited to see all the children coming back. So I'd say we're back to normal, but again, the, the new normal is different. As they say, new ways, new days. Um, I see Natalie joining in. Hi, Natalie. Uh, yes, so uh, the purpose of this webinar is to share with the audience uh, the things that have been put into place to reopen nurseries, to reopen learning centers and doing all this, yet keeping this as a safe place. So I, I have a little something that I've prepared for you that will uh, allow me and Ms. Ahud, uh, who will be joining me shortly, to stay on track and to make sure that we are able to share as much as possible. Um, I believe you, you're able to see my screen. So give me a moment. Right, so our purpose of this webinar is to tell you that how Maple Bear, our early learning center is a safe, happy place even after COVID. So what happened in the lockdown? Um, a lot of things changed. We were not operational at the same time from a child's point of view, from a parent's point of view, the children were home. They were not able to socialize. They were not able to physically meet their friends, physically meet their children. So I think with the reopening, the biggest challenge was not only to make sure it's a safe place, we had to put the pieces of the puzzle back together. We had to ensure that we're operating in a safe, socially distanced place. At the same time, the children are still learning, the children are still happy, the children are still thriving. So um, I will be honest, we, will, we would have been able to do this without the authorities. In the past, I would say close to three months, uh, Maple Bear Preschool um, in Dubai, and Abu Dhabi. We've worked very, very closely with the authorities. The authorities being um, KHDA themselves, uh, Dubai Health Authorities, known as DHA, the Women Municipality. And uh, we were, just like all the nurseries, we were given a very strict rule book as to what they expect to see put in place in order for us to receive a permission to reopen. And I'm very proud to say that we are one of the only and first early learning centers to open in this side of town and to welcome the children. And, uh, but it, of course, a lot of things went into it. Let me begin sharing that, uh, sharing all of that. Um, for example, why is it new? So we have a health and safety team in place. So right from the way the children arrive in the preschool, that has changed. 
Initially, the drop off time was 8 a.m. Now, what we are required to do is all our children uh, come at different times. So, for example, we have five different classrooms. They all have a five. They have five different drop off times at intervals of 10 minutes each. The reason being, we don't want the children from different classes to mix with each other. We want to maintain their bubbles. So, all the children have been uh, all the classrooms as. Previously, we had, let's say, a class size of 18 children in a class. Now, as per the new rules, we are not allowed to have more than 10 children in the class. And the reason is simple. The reason is logical. The reason is we need the children inside a classroom to be socially distant. Um, it is challenging because they're young children. However, I, in my uh, two weeks looking at the children, they are doing really well. The teachers are making the children understand the importance of, um, you know, socially distant, being careful, and it's, it's working very, very well. So all our classes have a maximum of 10 children and two uh, teachers uh, with them. The, 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 the way the classroom is laid out, I will show it to you later. I have a few pictures to share it with you. When we receive the children in the morning, I have pictures from that as well. So we have a very strict uh, process in place. We have an in-house nurse. She has a very, very big part to play in the health and safety team, including myself and a few more teachers. So what we have uh, done is when we receive the children in the morning, it's a very strict process. We have, we take their temperature. If the temperature is okay, only the child is allowed to step in. We have a sanitizing mat where the child would wipe their shoes, sanitize their shoes. Once that is done, the, the bags are also formed by a sanitizing machine. Now, bear in mind that all these sanitizers, these chemicals used are approved by the Dubai, Dubai municipality, by Dubai health authorities, and they are very, very, very safe to be used in a preschool environment. And that's when I say that the authorities have supported us very well, 200%, and we wouldn't have been able to open without them. So once the child is ready, the bags are sanitized, uh, everything is done, they come in, uh, they are uh, welcomed by their own classroom assistant because we don't want the child from, let's say, a nursery class to be helped out by a teacher from a KG class because that would cross-contaminate our bubbles and we want to minimize contact outside the bubble. The child would go in, the timetable is the same, the children engage in the same activities, be it a language activity, or be it their learning centers, or be it uh, their outdoor time. However, the playground, they don't, all the classes don't use the playground at the same time. If a nursery classroom is using the playground, once they're done, we have a fogging system in place. The entire area is disinfected, sanitized by the appointed assistant before the next group can use the same area. Again, we are doing this to minimize contact, to minimize the uh, cross uh, contamination. So uh, even when they're in the premises, from a child's point of view, the only way their day looks different is instead of having bigger tables that they used to earlier, they are just um, limited to their own single tables. I'll share pictures with that. And I did have a concern. Uh, Ms. Abud had a concern too that would the children get, uh, you know, would they engage? Would they interact with their friends? But they've had no trouble. They are on their desk uh, having their own stationery. They're not even sharing their stationery. Uh, but they're very happy. They're still engaging. They're with their teachers, with their friends, participating in the games. And honestly, it feels great to see them uh, happily engaged. You'll see the pictures very soon. Um, that is just a snippet of how a child's day would look like. Uh, I would like to highlight that the child day is not affected in any way, that nothing has been taken away from how pre-COVID days look. Of course, uh, we have uh, taken away toys, which we think are difficult to sanitize because at the end of every day, a thorough sanitization is carried out in each of the classes. The toilets, for example, uh, every classroom has a toilet in Maple Bear. Even that is washed and cleaned and disinfected after every use because KHTA and the authorities have told us very clearly to make sure there's constant uh, sanitization, there's disinfect 
existing uh, policies in place as well as we're minimizing cross-contamination. Let me just take you down. As I've said, the social distancing measures are in place even around the school. Uh, if you ever uh, come to Maple Bear, I'd love to show you around. Uh, when I'm sitting at the reception to welcome the parents along with my admin manager, um, we have a glass barrier. We have uh, clear markings on the floor throughout the school to keep reminding the children, keep reminding the parents that we need to have distance in between two individuals to make sure there is no spread of infection. I did mention about the arrival and pickups. Just like the arrival, even the children's dismissal time is staggered. They're not all being dismissed at the same time. They're only being dismissed as per their bubble. And I'm very happy that the parents have cooperated with us in this manner because, and even it's, it's so impressive to see when I'm waiting and sending the children off, when a parent is there, the second parent would wait at a distance on the uh, demarcated area on the floor. And I'm so pleased to see that because um, it takes two parties to make this work. And I'm very, very happy to see that all our parents are cooperating and we're winning on this front. Uh, just a little snippet. Uh, I'm just going to check with one of you. Can you see my picture? Miss Beverly, can you see my picture? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so uh, that is one of, oops. Yeah, so that is uh, at our entrance. Uh, as I mentioned that the shoes and the bags, and if you see this little bag over here, the white uh, bag, it contains the uh, sleeping blankets of children. So that's another, uh, I'm glad I put that picture out there. It would tell, so we have another room in place that if children are napping in the nursery, we can't, if they're using the blankets, they have to be sent home each and every day for a wash. Again, it's done just to make sure that uh, there's no spread of infection. We have a, a teaching assistant in place. As soon as they arrive, their bags, their shoes, everything is sanitized. I'll quickly show you a picture of our nurse. That's our nurse welcoming our children and the parents. So as you can see behind the, the assistant is sanitizing this child's belongings. And Miss Nurse is taking the temperature, making sure he's feeling okay. And that's when, and that's where the parents leave. Beyond this line is when we help the children inside. And just some happy parents waiting at the drop off. As you can see, there are arrows and demarcations over here where the parents and the children have to wait. And once again, I am so proud of them for helping us out over here. That was in fact our first day and we were so, so happy to see all the children back. I think I have spoken about uh, screening and disinfection bit as well. Um, I, if any of you have a question, can you please, uh, I'm going to, Ms. Nida, would you like to say something? I'm trying to, yes, Ms. Nida, I think I've unmuted you. Yeah, I think uh, this is, it's been a very good opportunity to understand what is a preschool environment like right now. I think parents uh, all around and those of us that are in the Gulf have uh, been sort of double-minded in terms of what to expect from our, from our teachers, uh, what to expect from the classroom environments. And the question arises in terms of how comfortable will our children be as they're learning. And knowing that those screening and disinfection measures might be intimidating for a child. So if you're able to shed some light on that, um, really, you know, what makes us so friendly? How have we adapted? How have we been able to adapt to make sure that the, those processes do not um, disrupt the child's right. relationship with learning and the classroom and the school itself? Right. 
Thank you, Nida. I think I'm very glad you raised that because there's just so much information that I wanted to share that I, I may have missed out on that. You're right. And that was my and Ms. Ahu's concern as well as to we don't want all these new measures to disrupt our children's, you know, state of mind, happiness, just a general flow. So um, the sanitization and all of the things take place before they arrive. While they're inside, I'll give you a very small example, hand washing. Now there are sanitizers overnight installed all around the nursery in all the classrooms. However, I think children, especially three and up, realize what's going on, but the toddlers of course don't. So what we do is we make it into a game. So all, we are trying to introduce the importance of hygiene, importance of washing hands in a regular day. We also have this nurse going around the nursery every one hour, ringing a bell, like literally a bell. And that's when the children would sing a song and they would, you know, do their hand washing. Uh, yes, there are teaching assistants going around with sanitizers and all after every clean. But I think it's a lot of, uh, for the younger children, we, make it, make, you know, we try and tell them that it's a game and then we have to do it to stay healthy, to stay fit. The older children, surprisingly, are very receptive to it. And in fact, when, when they come in the morning, they, their favorite thing to do is extend their hand out for the sanitizer because they know that step one in this is to wash their hands. And uh, the older children, for sure, we try to uh, engage them in activities which uh, make them understand the reason behind all the sanitization, all the disinfection, no sharing of toys, all of that. Younger children, sure, it's more challenging. So what we've done is we've put more um, precautions in place in our toddler age group because they're under the age of three. They are very young. Um, uh, pedagogically, it is difficult for them to share. And our policy used to be please share, please share, please share. But now, again, we're not sharing. So I'll give you an example for um, children love to put things in their mouth, the younger children. And it's natural. We can't stop them from doing it, but we're putting up uh, someone else who joined in. Uh, hi, Toba. So uh, when that happens, we have uh, measures in place. We have more toys than what we used to previously. So all the toys that have been infected by children because they put it in their mouth, we put it for disinfection. And I've been talking to the teachers so far, they have been okay. And I haven't really seen any reactions and very like, you know, surprise reactions as to what's going on. And I'm so confused. In fact, even the sanitizing mat, it's a hit with the children. So when they come in, they have a little sanitizing dance that they do at the gate, uh, door. And uh, they, they will force their parents to do it too, because it's, it's just so funny for them. So yeah. That is something that we have observed and uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that it's working out well because that was a fear that we had. Anybody else, would you have any questions? Please raise your hand, then I can uh, unmute you. I mean, we're having this webinar so we can share as much as we can and you're more than welcome to come pay us a visit, uh, you know, reach out to me, Ms. Ahud, and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions in person as well as at the center. And that reminds me one more thing. So unlike uh, last time where we had visitors and tours allowed throughout the day, unfortunately, to keep our children safe, we don't do that anymore. We only conduct tours after 3.20 p.m. because that's when our last bubble of children leave. So it's been challenging because we have a lot of parents coming or wanting to come down and see us and we're trying to uh, help them out as much as we can. And uh, however, it's just a very, very limited window for us to answer questions, but I'm, I'm glad we're able to do it. But again, we will do everything and anything possible to protect our children, to keep this a safe, happy learning environment. I believe Ms. Nita would like to ask something else. Yes, Ms. Nita. Um, I think two weeks into it, we, you, sh you have had some experience with each of the age ranges. Uh, I know you've touched on the outdoor play um, right. And you've touched as well on the fact that the children have adapted really quickly. Are you able to talk a little bit about what the, the classroom learning, how the teachers have adapted that, and for those parents that are still transitioning back from e-learning, 
how are we approaching that as um, from an academic perspective? Thank you, Neda. Thanks for that question. So I'll uh, tackle the outdoor bit first. So as mentioned, we have a, a long, very physically long outdoor area and we've used that in our advantage. So what we've done is we've divided it because as I said, bubbles can't be mixed. So we had to restructure our center schedule in order to accommodate that the children get maximum outdoor time, yet not compromising the bubble. So a child is going out every day for the outdoor time. And we are very, very fortunate at Maple Bear Business Bay to have an indoor play area. And the children absolutely love it. So, uh, of course, after being indoors for so many months, it's very, very important pedagogically to look after their physical fitness, their, uh, you know, their cross motor skills. So, both are outdoor, the two outdoor areas, as well as our, we call it the moves room, that's where the indoor air play area is. That has really, really helped us to take care of their physical development. In terms of in, in, in classroom teaching, honestly, uh, and I'm going to be honest here, um, my and the teacher's biggest fear was the physical division in terms of the children's placement because in early childhood classroom, it makes a big difference because a big part of our daily life is the socialization. However, as I've said earlier, that has not been a problem. Uh, we are still conducting e-learning. So what our teachers have very, very skillfully done is uh, some parents are still on e-learning and I see more and more of them joining our in-house uh, learning. So there are portions, for example, uh, in a typical day for all the age groups, it would look like they have their circle time in the morning that still remains. They have French and they have Arabic. We offer both languages every day. So yes, the change over there is we have one language teacher and we do not want the language teacher to visit class to class. So she's on our campus. However, she's in her own classroom and she conducts her language lessons through Zoom. And that happens and so all the classrooms are equipped with projectors, with screens. So, and let's say KG1 classroom will tune into their Zoom language French lesson. At the same time, KG1 children who are at home on e-learning, they connect remotely. The teachers have worked really hard on making this timetable very seamless. So there are, and it's made in a way that a child, in-house child, has enough uh, window to move around at the same time, uh, have their outdoor time, have their physical, you know, play time, have sensory time, uh, and have their, uh, you know, proper lesson time, language time. Uh, the older children even have their reading and writing time. So I think the schedule has not been moved around, but it's been tweaked around to accommodate uh, more physical movement, and it's been tweaked around to accommodate our e-learning children. So that's how we've moved on. And uh, as I have mentioned earlier, yes, uh, I did have my reservations, um, but looks like the children are more adaptable than I am. And the teachers have done a great job to make sure there's constant movement. And whenever I do my walks, I do see the children, all the playgrounds full at all times. And the assistant in charge of disinfecting them, yeah, and she's doing a great job too to make sure that it is carried on regularly. Anyone would, would you have any questions? Christina, Cynthia, Natalie, Tuba, anything that you would like to share? Any concerns that may be stopping you from sending them uh, to school or any concerns? And I'm, I'm not sure if the children are already attending us. I see Natalie raising her hand. Yes, Natalie, I am. Okay. Yeah, yeah, now it's fine, right? Yeah, yeah. hi everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, the update. Well, I, I don't know if it's the right time to ask the question, uh, but you know, um, I understand uh, Business Bay opening was uh, granted, a reopening authorization was granted, but um, like typically my kids, normally they go to Al Safa, so just grateful if you have any updates regarding this. Absolutely, and now is the right time to ask. Don't worry about that, Natalie. Uh, well, uh, we are very, very close to reopening that. And uh, I mean, we are just in queue because I think compared to, we are an early learning center, Business Bay, and there are a handful of early learning centers in Dubai compared to the number of nurseries. So we are in queue. It's just a matter of time when they come and inspect us and give us a go. 
So yeah, we are in the queue. And I mean, yeah, Business Day, we are really, really lucky. Yes. Okay, so so basically we still don't have a, so we're in the queue, but we, I know it's hard to give a timeline, but there's yeah, no, yeah. no further update regarding uh, Whenever there is, uh, we will contact you. I mean, all the, of course, all the Alsafa parents, yes, we will contact them. Thanks. Thank you, Nat. One final question, uh, and this is in relation to yeah. the resources that the children are able to use. Um, would you be able to shed some light in terms of how you personalize that to make sure that the resources remain safe and individually utilized as much as possible? Because I know a lot about the Maple Bear curriculum is about being hands-on. So it's not about paper and pen. And obviously at that age, it's very difficult for those kids or impossible, yeah. um, the younger they are. Can you shed some light on whether there's individualization at the resource level? Absolutely. Actually, I think I got so carried away in sharing all the information. I just stopped moving my slides up and down. Um, let me just stop. So of course, uh, so when that was the part when I was talking about the regular hand washing and poise disinfection. So before we reopened the business day branch, what we did was we informed the parents about all the changes, the possible changes, the biggest changes being a few, the bubbles, the entry and you know the arrival and the departure time, and the second biggest change being uh, the stationery and their belongings. So um, what we told the parents was each child is to bring their own stationary box, a clear, I mean, a pouch or a box, preferably not a pouch, but a clear box, which contains all the stationery that the teacher requires. Every teacher they send out a stationary list because again, the objective is we don't want them to share. And uh, because once the, there's a classroom stationary, the sharing really, you know, can get out of hands. We can sp spread things around. So children come with their own stationary box it stays in their cubbies and they have access to it when they want of course uh, we want to minimize for example water uh, we're not allowed to dispense water in nurseries so the parents were very understanding and they did uh, i mean agree when we asked them to send more than two water bottles because we want the children to be drink water stay hydrated so if I have a child coming to Maple Bear, he or she, when they start, they typically come with their backpack, their lunch, and their water, as well as a stationary pack. On the second day, the stationary pack and uh, stays in the school, whereas uh, on a daily basis, they come in with their water and their lunch and their snack pack. So yes, we are not encouraging to share stationary, and as well as I mentioned about toys. The toys have to be, uh, as soon as they're used, uh, before a next child could use it, they have to be have to be sanitized by the TA, and we have a system in place in the school. And hence, if you would love, if you would like to come to the school, I'll be very very happy to show you all that around. And I think we are running out of time. It is uh, four thirty, and I think Miss Nidal, uh, would you like to just say one last thing? Yeah, I see her hand up. I, I was just going to add that I think uh, it's very reassuring that you've raised all these points. Uh, I like the aspect of having individualized uh, toys also dedicated as well as the enhanced disinfection measures. Um, I think that makes it essential for, uh, this is essential information rather, for parents to be able to understand how safe the environment is and that the practicalities can be looked at to overcome that, um, that fear that children might have or parents might have towards sending their children into an environment that's outside of their home, especially after such a lengthy period of being in the home together. Um, it's, uh, it is difficult as a parent to part ways from your child, even if they are going back to a familiar place. It is, and we understand that. And I think that's one of the reasons uh, we'd like, you know, we had this webinar, we'll continue having it because it's not easy after such an unexpected long event like what we all have been through to get back into the routine. But I'm very proud to say that Naval Bear has done a great job and I'm, I'm happy to see other preschools do the same. And it's just really, really happy to see the children back on campus and the teachers as well. Uh, before Cynthia, I take on your question and that will be the last question of the evening. Can I just share some pictures? 
So that if you can see, this child is on his own uh, table and then there are children sitting socially distanced away doing their uh, own activity and that is a toddler classroom. That is a very, we just celebrated um, Canadian Thanksgiving at school and uh, that's the KG1 classroom, very, very happy looking children and they've just finished a craft and as I just wanted to show out the socially distanced bit and it seems to, I mean, it doesn't seem to bother children that they're sitting on individual tables and I'm very pleased about that. And just a quick glimpse of our e-learning. So that is our teacher in the classroom. And of course she's with her in-house children and these children are joining us remotely from home. And a lot of them, to my delight, have agreed to start their in-house learning because I think the parents are getting more and more comfortable with it. Oh yeah, that's our in-house uh, play area. And as, as I said that, we want to give them enough opportunities to have their physical movement and you know run around develop their gross motors so that's just a very short small you know snippet of our indoor play area it's huge so you must come and visit us so i can show it to you oh yes i will quickly move on to miss cynthia yes cynthia how can i help you Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, yes I can, yes. Oh, thank you. First of all, thank you for the presentation. You've been very thorough and professional. I'm really pleased to hear about how you're making the sanitation procedures, which are quite tedious. You're finding fun ways to engage the family, so bravo. <laughs> um, yes, they are very important and again, yeah. Uh, they're inevitable. We have to do them for the sake of our children and staff. So no, we're more than happy to do it. Yeah, but to do it in a fun way is really nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, one question, I just needed clarification. You mentioned that you have, um, at, because of the situation, only one language teacher. I wonder which language uh, the teacher is teaching? Well, so, uh, so language is a very important part of the Maple Bear curriculum. So we always had a language teacher in the past and just one. So she would uh, do French and Arabic for the children every day for a short duration, depending on the age of the classroom. So we still have the same. So last time we had one who would go from class to class doing her Arabic and French lessons because the medium of education here is English anyway. Yeah. That's the same. The only difference is she does it remotely. So she's sitting in a classroom and she's remotely connected to all the other classrooms. I mean, okay. it was a bit funny at the start because Miss Sadia is right there. <laughs> but then uh, the children were like, why is Miss Sadia not coming in my classroom? And we yeah. tell them that because, you know, she can't be going to all the classrooms and maybe we're going to watch her on the big screen so they get really excited about that. Okay, very nice. So she's able to teach English, uh, French and Arabic. That's oh. right. Yes. Fantastic. Wow. That's, yeah. that's really nice to hear. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cynthia. And as I said, yes, we have a separate individual stationary pack and about uh, making the COVID scenario fun, just to end the presentation with what we did today was the all the parents and the children in Maple Bay loved was uh, it's global hand washing day. So our nurse uh, conducted a hand washing tutorial through Zoom because again, even the nurse is not permitted to enter the classroom every day. So all the children enjoyed watching Miss Giselle, our nurse in the clinic on Zoom, uh, washing her hands using the correct technique. And she also educated the children about the importance of doing it. So I know these are small steps, but we're very excited to see the children so happy. And uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, we are very, very, very happy to uh, entertain any more questions. You can email me uh, or you can even follow us on Instagram. That's our Instagram handle, MapleBearUAE. And uh, the email address that was there for sign up for the workshop was info at maplebear.ae. You can reach out to me on that for any other question. And uh, yeah, you can even give us a call and book us a visit if you'd like. And if you're an existing parent, I'm sorry, I'm not very good with names. If you're an existing parent, so I'm always here. You can have a chat with me. And if you're a staff or parent, yes, uh, we will let you know as soon as our doors are open. 
So um, I think uh, I will sign off on that note. Thank you very, very much for uh, being here with me. And I hope to see you guys very, very soon. Have a good evening and have a great weekend. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.